Supply Ron here and today I'm going to teach you how to find tons of reference photos and how to edit those reference photos to be perfect for painting. Supply Ron here, thank you for joining me in another video. My main goal with today's video is to show you how you can take any reference photo and turn it into the perfect photo for painting, okay? Um, because sometimes you get a picture and it's a bit hard to tell the values, something's a little off, you're not sure, the colors are very confusing, and I'm gonna show you a streamlined process of taking any photo and turning it into the perfect reference that you can easily paint. This is great for beginners, it's really important to choose the right type of photo to paint. Um, I'm gonna show you a very basic process you can do in GIMP or Photoshop or any other image editing software and it's just really simple. Now, on top of that, I added another layer of first showing you a few great resources for reference picks, okay? My favorite ones that I use. If you're gonna, if you wanna sell your paintings later later on, you know, you, you wanna use them for something commercial, you can probably do that with some of the resources. With some of them, you have to be a little careful and ask, but these are great, great, great resources. And this will basically give you an unlimited supply of reference photos and then a process to turn each and every one of them into something accessible to you. Uh, as a beginner or even as an intermediate, I still go through this process um, even as when you're advanced, it can be really helpful. Okay, so I really hope you enjoy this one. Uh, it's the first time I do screen capture, so hopefully the result is gonna be cool. Uh, so without further ado, let's start this. Okay, so let me show you how to turn every uh, reference photo to one that's perfect for painting, okay? Uh, now, before we actually go to the image editing, uh, I wanna talk about uh, sources, great sources for reference photos and what consists of good reference. So, for watercolor painting, uh, a good reference, for me at least, is one that's really clear, really sharp, and you can see all of the details. Uh, and if it has strong contrasts, that's a bonus, okay? So, um, strong contrasts, and a large range of values. So you've got darks and you've got lights. So for example, pictures that already interest me a little more are, uh, this one is nice because you can clearly see uh, the move from shadow to light. Uh, this one is clearly, I just don't like this particular one, but you can see very dark, very light. Uh, this one's an interesting one. Uh, indeed, you have the light here uh, on the seal or whatever that is, sea lion. I guess it's a seal. Um, and you can see here the sharp shadow. This one, for example, isn't as good for watercolor painting. It's just, um, it's too dark and then there's all these lights and details. It's gonna be really hard to edit. Now, I'm not saying these pictures aren't good, uh, the ones that aren't suitable, they're just less suitable for uh, watercolor painting. Okay, so uh, the three sources I wanna show you for reference pics. The first one is Pixabay, and this is my number one. So, uh, Almost all of the reference pictures here are free for use for anything. Now, I want to use my pictures, maybe I want to sell a painting or something like this. If it's based off of a picture that has copyrights on it, you can't probably sell it without permission. So I want to, I prefer going here and choosing my reference photos here. Now, some of them aren't going to be as suitable. Again, maybe this one could be a good one. Um, let's see another one. Maybe this one will be good for painting. I actually uh, did a few paintings based on this one. Now when you click it, you can see the uh, copyright and you see here CC0, Creative Co uh, CC0, sorry, Creative Commons, free for commercial use, no attribution. You can use this to, for whatever you want. Okay, now you do need to make sure per picture and make sure that you don't get in trouble or you don't do something that you're not permitted to do. You can always um, contact the person uh, who is the owner of this photo. Next up we have Flickr. Uh, this is also good sometimes. Let's go with apples once again. Uh, this can be also uh, a good one, but you do have to be really careful maybe to choose the specific license you want. For example, no known copyright restrictions uh, will probably get you to pictures that are uh, public domain, like you can see here, that you can use for whatever you want, okay? But it's always better to contact the person who uploaded it. Uh, the third resource I want to show you is Wet Canvas. This is a really, really good uh, forum for painting, not just for watercolor, and I highly recommend you check it out in any case. But what I want to show you is here to the right we've got the image library so if you click here you get uh, to the library where you can see pictures uh, filtered by tons of different uh, topics and you know you have food fruits vegetables landscapes people skies uh, and when you click one the cool thing is if you scroll a bit uh, you'll find the popular 
uh, most popular images. And they're popular for a reason because usually they're good for painting or whatever you want. Um, so the most popular ones are great one. As far as I know, these ones aren't released, so they do have a license. Uh, so you can't just use those and sell the result. You need to really make sure that you can use it. But with the Pixabay, for the most part, you're good. Now, one more thing I want to tell you is you have several tools. For, so for example, if I search for face, um, just for a person's face, then I get all of these different faces. I can then uh, filter by color so I can go with black and white. And what this does is it may help me down the line if I get a picture that's um, from the beginning is black and white, it may be easier to paint. Just an example. Okay, so these are the three resources I really recommend. I'll put everything in the description box. Now, um, what I want to show you, so I have a few pictures I saved here from Pixabay. Uh, the first website I showed you and let me just show you some of those uh, you may recognize these the swans that I painted a few days ago um, there's just all kinds of pictures here um, this one I also did a painting based off of um, and um, so in any case what I want to do is show you how I put this into a image editing software and turn it uh, just into a better pick for painting so I'm gonna choose uh, let's go with uh, this uh, this one first I think this is the one uh, we just looked. Okay, let's let's try this one out. I did a painting based on that one too. So we're gonna open this up with GIMP. Okay, uh, if you have Photoshop, that's even better. I hate GIMP, uh, but I use it uh, at the moment. I'm gonna probably upgrade to Photoshop soon. Uh, so in any case, this is the picture. In one moment, it'll open. So there are mainly three things we can do. The first one is play around with the levels. The second one is to desaturate it. And the third one is to posterize it. So I'm going to show you in each of those is different levels. If you feel comfortable with the reference, you don't have to edit it at all. But if you want to improve how it looks to you and the ease with which you can paint it, First off, you want to go to levels. Now, this picture's levels are probably perfect, but sometimes they won't be. So what will sometimes happen is you'll get a flat line like this, but totally flat near the edges. And then you want to play with these cursors and bring them all the way to the edge. And it'll improve the way the photo looks just a little bit. Okay, but with this one, it's really good. So uh, I don't have too much to play around with. Uh, next up, there's the saturation. So I'm not going to go to desaturate. I'm going to go to hue saturation. With Photoshop, it'll probably be image adjustments, hue saturation, or image adjustments, layer levels. Uh, and then I'm going to drop this bar, the saturation bar, all the way to the bottom. So now it's black and white. It's already easier to paint that way because you can better tell you don't have the colors to deal with. So it's just easier to see how dark this is compared to the sky, compared to this wall, compared to this uh, little river and all the boats and the people and everything. Now we want to take it one step further and play around with the number of levels. So number of levels equals number of different levels of darkness. Uh, so what I'm going to do is colors, posterize. In Photoshop it'll be probably image posterize um, or image uh, filter posterize, I'm not sure. So in any case, this allows me to actually choose the number of levels for the reference picture. So here I've got three levels only. Uh, if I can, I can even drop it to two, and then all I'll, I'm gonna have is black and white. And this is really again an interesting uh, thing. The, the software basically renders the picture based on its characteristics and turns it into fewer number of values. So we've got here two. I'm gonna add three. So now we're gonna have. Uh, sorry, my nose is a bit runny. So now we're gonna have uh, the white, the uh, black, and then the gray in the middle. And the more I add to this, the more of a variance or a variety of levels I'm going to have. So now I have four. Now I usually go with, I usually end up with six because I find that number to, to work for me. But it's really uh, different based on the reference you're using. So this is already really good. You can really tell here how dark or light everything is. Um, I look just for something that looks good. So the moment I found it, maybe we'll go with this one, for example, uh, with six numbers of levels. Uh, and it's so much easier to paint that way. So let me go back to the original picture and I'm going to put it in full screen. So notice this one, you have a lot of things to process. Now, <clears throat> depending on you, it may be easier for you to actually paint this. Um, everyone's a little different, but uh, for me, it's much easier to approach this. I can just see much more uh, clearly what's going on. Okay. Now, um, so this is basically all I wanted to show you in terms of editing. Let's do one more real quick. So I'm going to choose um, the swans that I showed you a few days ago. I'm going to go with this one open with GIMP. 
uh, and you'll see. So the swans, um, it's a really good one uh, um, as it is, but we're going to edit it ever so slightly. So uh, we're just going to give it a moment to open. And here you can see. So we're going to first play with the levels, once again, as I showed you. Uh, and here I can demonstrate to you uh, what it looks like. It's just going to take a moment to, to open. Uh, and then we'll continue. So now we've got the levels menu and notice the flat line that I was talking about earlier. So if I play around with these cursors, it's going to improve the quality of the reference. Okay. Um, and with the bottom one and the top one as well. So you want to get it close to where the curvature starts. Okay. So now we have just a little bit of a clearer view. Look here at the trees, uh, a clearer view of the contrast and uh, just the way this uh, should look if we would maybe see it in real life. It just improves it a bit. Uh, so now I'm going to click OK. And next up, let's look at the um, posterize. So we're going to, uh, you can posterize when it's in color, but that won't give us a good result. Um, <clears throat> it could, but it usually doesn't. So we're going to go with hue saturation. We're going to drop the saturation all the way to the end. And then we will go uh, with the uh, to the colors, this uh, posterize, sorry, uh, and I'm gonna control the number of levels. So with this one, we're gonna need to go a little higher because it's already fewer levels. And you can see here, for example, the wing totally merges with the sky. So I want to have that separation. So I'm just gonna add a few more, <clears throat> maybe around 12. And this is enough to discern uh, the wing from the sky, for example. Uh, and if you check this one out, um, this is much easier to draw than the original one where you can't really tell where the shadows are moving and where the uh, lighter areas are. So let's maybe go with 11 here, I think, uh, or maybe even just 10, because I just want to show you something. So uh, let's choose 10. So if you look at this one, it's much easier to paint than uh, the original one. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you have a good perception, you can tell where the shadows are. But notice here, there's a very gradual change. <clears throat> With this edited version, it's much easier to tell where to do these, uh, where to change the values. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. <laughs> uh, where to play around with everything. Now, just one final note uh, to wrap this up. Uh, when you're drawing for a painting, okay, and I'm, I'm I've been talking about this for a while, but um, you want to really draw the most basic lines you can, and you want to draw the lines of light and shadow. So I would totally draw this line here. I would definitely get this one. I hope you can see the cursor. Uh, so get this one. I will definitely get, uh, sorry, this one, uh, this line here. I'll actually draw them using pencil so that I know how to put them in when I add the color, okay, or the, the watercolors. Uh, and this is the exact same process I go through when I work on my portraits. The portraits, as you see here on uh, the YouTube channel, I open them up. I edit the picture to decrease the number of uh, values and this really helps me just to tell. And this is how you can turn every reference photo to a really good one that's easier to paint. So you have an unlimited supply of pictures you can go to. You can uh, go to these websites and really find very easily great pictures and then you can further edit them and make them much simpler uh, to paint, okay? Uh, so if you have, for example, this one, and I'm just gonna really wrap this up quickly. You have this picture, it's really hard to paint. Uh, this one is really hard to paint because notice the gradual changes that you have on the face. So with this method, um, it's much easier to do. Let me open this one in GIMP. Okay, so this one's a bit of a challenge. Let's see if we can turn it into something that's more suitable for painting. So we're gonna go with levels just to make sure the levels are fine, though they look fine. You can probably move this one a bit to the left, but it's really not that important. Then we go to um, posterize and check it out. So this is with much fewer, and I'm gonna add a few more levels. Few more, few more, few more probably. And here, I think this starts to be a good balance, okay? Something, let's say, maybe around here, okay? So this is so much easier to do. You can see where the light and chain and shadow shift and change. Uh, it's still rendering, by, by the way. Um, maybe one more, so 12. Uh, it's so much easier to work on than if you have to work on the uh, original one here. 
notice the difference. With this one, it's so hard to tell where the, the light is casting and the shadows. It's just, you can see it, but it's such a gradual change. And with this one, it's so much easier to work on. Uh, okay, so hopefully this gives you a clearer view of how you can get tons of photos from these kinds of websites and how you can really make them accessible even as a beginner and as a beginner you really want to work on the right reference one that you can work with that won't challenge you too much but that will push you just a bit uh, to the limits of your abilities okay so i really hope you enjoyed this quick demo uh, let's wrap up this video so this is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed seeing this and I hope uh, that you were maybe unfamiliar with these resources of photos and now you know where you can get your references from. I just want to put this whole video in context. I think it's really useful to combine painting from photos and painting from real life. Okay, so I do recommend you do both. Uh, a little bit of both is good. I went completely the direction of doing a lot of outside work and now I find a lot of value in photos as well because it's a bit hard to always paint outside. Okay, so if you enjoyed this one, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you still haven't subscribed to my channel and you like this video, I have tons of painting demos and things that are more directly related to painting and sketching and drawing. Uh, so definitely check these out. Uh, I will put a link in the description box for Instagram, Snapchat, uh, my podcast, Patreon, everything that you want to check out, you can check out in the description box below. Kindly leave me a comment saying what you think of this video and if it was helpful. I'm really curious to know. And if you have any other topics you want me to cover um, in the future, I'm always looking for new ideas. I really want to thank you for watching and I really appreciate all of the support here on this channel. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.